Welcome back to Studio K. I'm sitting here with the members of Civil Decline. How are you feeling, Civil Decline? Like generally or like right now? <laughs> well, I would say right now. I mean, Right now I feel, I feel all right. I feel all right? I'm a little warm, but that's because we just performed. Yeah. I mean, I feel like to recognize Michael's context, you can't really fully understand how you're feeling in the moment without mm -hmm. recognizing that in the larger context of like how you're doing as a person. So I'd say... Fine. <laughs> that's a, that's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for that. You look good, Daniel. You all look good. Thank I think you, I think that Jaime is best dressed, though. Yeah. Um. How many uh How many costume changes are there during your guys' show? Am I the first? You were the you're the first. You're the very first. So and first. And just, just wait till you see this video, everyone. Yeah. It's it's really striking. I can't wait till people just get confused. Like, wait, where's the guy that's playing bass? Oh wait, that is the guy that's playing bass. Yeah. Do you want to describe your outfit real quick for those who can't see you right now? Oh yeah. Um. So I bought some overalls today, and I'm wearing those. And then I got a nice brown shirt that has the Mexican flag, and then Monterrey, the city. That's where I'm from. And then I got some uh, retro uh, chucks on, white and red. Very nice. Oh, I also got a hat and some glasses on. I'm I'm a big fan of that hat. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. First things first, I want you all to introduce yourselves and what you play in this band. Um, I'm Daniel, and I play a lot of things. I mostly play myself in the grand scheme of things, but in this band, I play the drums. You're thinking so so large scale today. <laughs> Dude, he just... <laughs> Did you say something? My name, is, my name is Jaime. I play the bass in the band, and I'm essentially the moral support of the band as well. I feel like they can agree to that. I'm um, Michael. I sing and play the guitar. Very nice. And you were just saying you're, you're all middlemen in this group. There's no front man. There's no front man. There's no back man. There's no back man. Well, just it's very democratic, this group. Actually, I mean, usually I'm in the back, but it's by choice. <laughs> we're pro-capitalist, so we like to support, you know, just... Yeah. The mire of co co we're, we're corporate. We're really into hierarchies. Yes. We're, it's, it's, punk rock is all about breaking out of the mold. And I think our version of punk rock is supporting um, inequitable hierarchies and people profiting off of other people. Well, that's a contradiction to what we were just saying, though, because you're all on the same level, right? You were just saying. That no, all... we're all middlemen. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So we're all in the middle. You're in the middle. Okay. All right. Well, let's just keep, let's let's move on. Well, I think. well the thing is, because we're all different heights, so the middle of our bodies are all at different <laughs> spots. True. So, like, some of our middles are higher than others. Well, your bottom is actually in the middle. Of yeah. The well, right now it's at the yeah. Because I'm sitting on it. Is all right. Let, how about how about we talk about what we just heard today from you guys? Okay. Um, can you go through your set list for me, please? Uh, yeah, Daniel can. <laughs> um, we played a song called "Never Leave," which is about um, staying. We played a song called Parasite, which is about um, small organisms. And we played uh, a song called Minimum Wage, which... Because you're pro-capitalist. So. Yeah. Okay. We, <laughs> <Very nice. laughs> just about the abolition of the minimum wage. <laughs> right. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so are these, are these songs a part of a project that may or may not be coming out sometime soon? Um... None of, well, none of these songs, um, two of them are pretty new, like Parasite and okay. Minimum Wage are very new, or like somewhat new, like Parasite was like a month ago, or like two months ago we started. Cool. Um, but no, I mean, they're not like recorded or anything. We wanted to play like new songs, because we have two songs recorded right now, but uh, they're not out yet. Right. But we didn't want to play those ones, because it's like, why would we play them if we're going to be releasing them soon, you know? Totally. Just for promo, you know? Yeah. Come on. What it, what are the, what are the, We're a capitalist band. We don't believe in promotion. Yeah. No promotion. Yeah, especially on radio. We don't do that here. Um, cool. Okay. And, and those two songs, are they set to release sometime soon? The ones that you were... Um, when we get around to it. Yeah, when we get around to it. Yeah, it's quite the process. It is. Getting music out. Sure. It's not. It, we're just procrastinating. And <laughs> What stage are you at in it? Are you mixing and mastering? We're done yeah, with done. everything <laughs> except for clicking the button to upload, basically. Oh. Essentially. And what's stopping you from doing that? Oh, my God. Are we, are we getting... <laughs> um, well, actually, I don't have access to the, to the DistroKid account, so I can't do that. There isn't a DistroKid account. We oh. have to make one. <laughs> oh, okay. So there's more than a f than one button, I It seems suppose. like there's some mis mis miscommunication within the band, maybe. It's because we're all middlemen. There's no right. <laughs> organizational structure. So it makes for 
we are all the general regional manager and there's no one above or below right. us so it's it, it's a terrible would not recommend would not recommend i think, someone, I think someone needs to, to take a, a step forward i agree we need we need an authoritarian dictator in this band so should we get a manager for for the band eli do you want to manage civil decline I'm, yes okay cool we'll talk about right, this we'll talk about later. that later great we'll pay uh, you good that's great that's good to hear we will not <laughs> We'll talk about that later. Okay. We can work Sorry. those details out. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell me about how you guys came together as a group. You've been together uh, for about a year and a half now. Is that right? Um, yeah, a year and a half. I'd say all three of us started like playing together in September or October oh, okay. of 2021. Oh, so, 2021. So. Yeah, so almost two years now. Two years. Cool. Uh, we didn't play our first show since or until like April of 2022. Nice. And uh, me and Daniel knew each other for a long time. We went to the School of Rock in in Columbus. <laughs> well, no, it's no longer no longer going on. You can't look it up, but it used to be. Yeah, there was a lot of mis administrative issues going on over there. But right. Jaime, you want to talk about how you got into the band? Yeah. Um. One day, Danny Michael just manifested me into existence, and I appeared in his garage, and I had a bass in my hand. And I said, hey, might as well try it out. No, uh, really what happened was I've been seeing Danny for about, like, a thousand years at the house shows, and then it's like, I like that guy. That guy's cool. And then one day at a house show in St. Paul, Danny was like, we need a bassist. And I was like, I play bass. And then they said, hey, come play bass with us. And I was like, okay, crazy. And they said, we play all the way out. And Blaine is like, that's crazy. I live like six minutes away. And then the rest is kind of history. Wow. Yeah. Cool. And of... that was before the first show? Yeah. Then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And do you remember your first show? Can you give me kind of the details of that? First yeah. Show? It, was at a, it was at a house party down in the basement, unfinished as usual. Very nice. My hands cramped up and it was very hot. Mm -hmm. But I think overall people liked it. I liked it. Shout out Sam and Jack. Yep. Shout out Sam and Jack. Was it their yeah. house? And Zach. Zach. Yep. Wow. That's awesome. Cool. Okay. What, how has your sound kind of evolved from that first performance to now? Where have you taken things sonically? It's gotten better. It's gotten better? Yeah. It's great. <laughs> sonically, we're still fairly similar to how we started. We're moving okay. in a different direction with different songs, I guess. But cool. we don't really have like a vision, a sonic vision of where we want to go. It's right. just like... I don't know. I just want to write songs that sound cool on their own and they don't necessarily need to sound alike, although they do because I'm not, I don't have a very large palette on the guitar <laughs> or anything else in life. So, um, have you heard Bleach by Nirvana? Yes. It's like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's like that. Okay. Tell me about your, your influences. I'm definitely hearing some Nirvana in there, but what other groups have really inspired your sound? <laughs> What do you mean other groups? <laughs> That's Are it. there other bands? Oh, oh yes. Uh, I can take you back to the library that we have here and show you around a little bit. Influences. Like influencers. <laughs> like Jake Paul. Sure. Charlie D'Amelio. Yeah, she's a big one. No, I mean, what you hear is what you get. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out an answer to that question. That's more interesting than uh, anything. I don't know. What are your guys' influences? Like, what's your drumming influence? Meg White from the White Stripes. Really? Yeah. She, she, she didn't, she just played the notes that she needed to play, and sometimes they were on time, and sometimes they weren't. Um, and, yeah, she just let everyone else. She was really the back man of the White Stripes, okay. even though she's a woman. What are your influences, Jaime? I, I don't think I have one. I don't think I've ever done a deep dive into any band or bassist. So I like I don't know. Maybe there's some tendencies I have of other bassists out there, but I kind of just go with the flow. Whatever Michael tells me to play, and then sometimes I'll mess up, and but it sounds okay, so I just keep doing it until they tell me, "Hey, don't do that." <laughs> okay. And they don't if they don't tell me not to do it, then I just keep doing it, and then Very nice. we create a song. So I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of songs. I, I like anything that isn't like modern country, and that's about it. So if it has a groovy bass line or a funky bass line, I like modern country. I'm a modern country defender. I think we need to sound more like Luke Bryan. I think that's our creative direction. I agree. Michael, how's your southern accent? <laughs> Good. 
But yeah, I guess that might answer your question. Yeah, yeah. I think it does. <clears throat> so tell me about how a, how a song comes to be in this group. What's the songwriting process like? Michael writes it. Okay. Michael. It's not that simple. <laughs> it's, that simple. It, it's fairly simple. Michael writes it. He says, guys, I got a new song for you. And then it takes me about a day to memorize the bass line that he has it. Yeah, it's, I mean, he writes it in parts. And then he tells me the bass line, and then I'll forget it. And I was like, hey, Michael, what note do I play? And then I was like, oh, okay, I got it. And then I somehow remember it, and then I mess up again. But like I said, I mess up, and it sounds good. So we just keep going with that. Okay. So it's, yeah, so Michael you is... add on your own songwriting process? <laughs> Actually, no, you guys covered all the bases. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't... I mean, I just, like, I'll write something usually and then i'll bring it to them and then it's different for every song some songs will be more fleshed out before i even show it to them and some of them will just be like a riff and uh cool we'll figure it out yeah totally how about lyrical content what what, what kind of lyrical themes do you tend to gravitate towards as a writer <laughs> i have no idea um <laughs> like i don't know i just i'll write things that sound somewhat cool i definitely forgot a lot a lot of the lyrics tonight but like I'll write something that I'm like, oh, this is really profound, mm -hmm. and then I'll be like, but it doesn't sound that good. And then I'll like flip it and then say the opposite of what it meant, mm -hmm. and then I'll be like, this sounds better, and it's still profound, even though it means the opposite of what I just <laughs> said. So it's completely meaningless, and um, I don't know. Yeah, that's super meta, though. I yeah, say. I don't know. I mean, sometimes like I don't know what I'm writing. A s I don't really write a song about something, but then I'll look at the lyrics and I'm like, oh, it might mean mm. this. Up to interpretation. Yeah, then that's that's great. Cool. Um, what's do you have a favorite song that you've written so far for Civil Decline? Or one a favorite song to perform, maybe? Favorite song to perform? I'd probably say probably Bossa Nova, mm -hmm. which is like this like pretty punk song we have. It's like our it's like a minute and a half long, and it's. Really cool. fast and cool. And why do you call it bossa nova? I don't know. <laughs> it's not a bossa nova. It's the opposite of that. Yeah. And that's why, because you like to just flip things. Yeah. yeah. Well, no. Wait, is it? <laughs> I don't think Michael knows what a bossa nova is. I'm not very like cultured <laughs> musically. I don't know why I'm here. To be honest. <laughs> like, this, is, this is just all one big great accident. You know, the band and us being here just kind of happened. Yeah. It's a happy accident. You were an accident. Uh yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it was planned, but I don't think they, they considered it an accident. You got a plan for the eventful. Yeah, it's true. Did say that again? <laughs> <laughs> you got a plan for the eventful. And I think Jaime's birth was very eventful for your parents. It's true. Mm. It was. It was the first one and probably the best one. Wow. I am the best. Yeah, well, that was the first child, and I'm, I, my personal opinion, I feel like I'm the best child, okay? That's fair. That's yeah. totally fair. All right, cool. Well, you guys have been playing out for, for about over a year now in the scene. Tell me what you love about the Minneapolis music scene. What, oh, what every, everyone is just so cool and welcoming, yeah. and it's a nice little vibe at every single show. I mean, every house show, every venue you go to, it's a little bit different, but yeah. it's all on the same theme, you know? Just inclusivity and good music and flying flying elbows. Yeah, flying it's all elbows. really great. Definitely. Yeah, I mean it's a cool place to go to the scene. You know, I love going there and talking to everybody, <laughs> drinking, having a good time. <laughs> yeah, no, I like um, when. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I like when um, people see us play. And you can tell they were really affected by, um, you know, our music and our message and the vibe and what we're trying to put out there. Um, and then they uh, follow us on Instagram.com and our follower number goes up. And that's what I'm really here for is um, artificial surface level um, social media validation. That's valid. Thank like you, Eli. Danny's in the band because they're definitely the most honest person you'll ever meet. It's true. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, though. I think with that's honesty. That, well, no. Sometimes with, there's something wrong with that. With, with seeking superficial. <laughs> uh, oh no, one hundred percent. And there's something yeah. romantic about you know spoiling one's um, potential on hedonistic desire. 
You should write a song about that. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Use those words too. Come back to this interview. Take that. Take that sound bite and put it in the song. I think. Do we have to credit you. Well, I'm your manager now, so yes, <laughs> I'll have to take a cut of that. Your your royalties. It's an eighty percent cut. Everything. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, I'll write out the contract later. Okay. Cool. Um, can you tell me about some other local groups that you've loved playing with so far? Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a ton. I uh, really like Amateur Hour. Mm. I think they're cool. Um, I like Death Sounds, although they're no longer around, unfortunately. But I really love their sound. I'm getting a text. I'm sorry. Okay, I should. Never mind. Um, Romcom, up and coming uh, punk, up and up? pop punk band. They're gonna do a lot of great things. Um, we have a show coming up in, on August 25th at the Amsterdam, which is going to be really fun. We got Anita Velveeta, Keep for Cheap, and National Park Service on the bill with us. Wow. And that's going to be... It's quite the bill. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just, I like bands that I like the sound of, but... Also, I like bands that I'm friends with at the same time. Totally. They're not always the same thing, but Fair, yeah. when they are... You got to be supportive, though, regardless. Yeah, oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right, well, now that we're talking about shows, tell me about some upcoming shows that you guys have outside of the, the 25th. Or... Um... Anything else? <laughs> do you know the schedule? I do not remember. <laughs> well, we um... got one. That's... <laughs> yeah, we're, like, we're taking a bit of a gap here because okay. um, we're all like moving out in September and stuff, so we're like, oh. preparing for that. But, uh, yeah, so our next show is August 25th. After that, I'd have to look at my Instagram. I could look real quick. If- <laughs> Are you taking a hiatus then? And you said you're moving out. There's a or- bunch in the September. Yeah, there's a few in September. We're moving from our um, respective homes into one home. Oh, I see. It's the be the three of you. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's fantastic. Cool. How about any any merch drops, any uh, music releases? I guess we already talked about that. But. Yeah, we're prepping uh, to release something at some point. Okay. Um, merchandise is whenever I feel like making it and feel like bringing it to a show. So okay. I can't make any firm predictions on that. Fair. But at some point... In the works, though. There will be some. I mean, there is some. It's sitting in your basement. But eventually I'll roll it up and put it in the box and bring it somewhere. Cool. While we're, while we're looking up the schedule, I, I can't. Uh, there's no schedule. Okay, there's no schedule. <laughs> it's an absolute, just <laughs> okay. like, mess. Just, it's a mess. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Great. That's well, a safe way of putting it. We got August 25th. They can, people can we catch do. you then. We do. That's we great. We just wait till people like Absolutely. message us on Instagram and are like, hey, you guys ready for the show next week? And we're like, oh, yeah, we did have a show. Is, that, <laughs> is that what you did for this today? Or huh? Is that what you did for the, this performance today? Yeah. 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 Cause you hit us up, you were like, "Hey, you gotta send in that form." I was like, "Form? I don't check the email." <laughs> but no. Well, you got it in, and you're here, and we, we we've done it. We done. To it. be clear, I did done. tell him to fill out the form multiple times okay. before that. Cool. Um, yeah. Daniel's our man, our true manager. True. For now. Watch it. Okay, watch it. Watch it. All right. Um, two more questions for you. Um, the, the, the name Civil Decline, is that more of an embodiment of yourselves or is that an observation of your outer world? <laughs> it's a inner or outer observation of a lot of different material conditions and different confluence of factors that I'll go into the name, and I don't believe in free will. <laughs> um, to sum up what Michael said, yeah. Fair. It's really about this kid right here, because, like, I don't know. He's like a little roofian, or ruffian. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Jaime does things, guys. He does things. Jaime is the only one who contributes to society. We don't have real jobs. That's true. Yeah. Not All yet. right. All right. All right. <laughs> Last question for you. Uh, I want you guys to build yourselves a dream bill. 
where you perform on it, you get three other bands to play with you on the bill. <laughs> and you can all pick one. How about that? Okay, we all pick one band? Yep. Does not have to be local. Can be out there in the world and does not have to be alive, too. GG Allen. Okay. <laughs> well, we're screwed now. We can't, like, we can't have any other bands on a bill with... <laughs> <laughs> We'll be good with Gigi Allen. <laughs> doesn't have to be. We play mixed bills, Michael. It doesn't have yeah, to be. I want true. this to be super eclectic, all over the place. Uh, Gigi Allen, and um, I would say uh, Casting Crowns. One of my favorites. My choice would be a special guest. You know, I don't. I don't know who oh. it is. No one knows. Yeah, it's a secret guest. special guest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. TV. <laughs> that's right. You TV. gotta show up to the show to, to find out exactly. who the special guest is. Right. That's right. Let's book it. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's get it done. <laughs> I'm your manager, so we, we yeah. got to get this done. All right, we have lots to talk about, uh, but but off here. Thank you so much for coming in, Civil Decline. I, I really thank you for you coming in, Eli. We really appreciate your time. Yes. Thanks for mm-hmm. coming to work, Eli. Of course. Yes. Thanks for having me. I Thank you. Monsieur Awada. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs>